my name is Rebecca. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram. You can find show notes on the blog, owlknitwithyou.blogspot.com. You can find the group on Ravelry if you search for Owlknit With You. Or you can email me, owlknitwithyou at gmail.com. Hi, how are all of my owls and my knees? How have you guys been? Um, I have been knitting like crazy and I did some fun stuff with my local fiber group. So let's get into it. Um, the progress, I've got a thing blocking some sunlight that I'm worried it's going to tip over, but I think we're okay for now. Um, I've made some progress on spinning, but I'm kind of saving it for tour de fleece. So, um, I either need to get that off the bobbins or kind of start over and I haven't really decided what I want to do yet because that starts the 4th of July. So blobbins, it's a coming. Um, but I have lots of good works in progress to show you while we wait. So, um, my first work in progress is my secret test knit that I'm doing. Um, I can't show it to you, but it's really pretty. <laughs> um, I actually dyed some yarn for it, which I will show you because you, I mean, you can see the yarn, obviously. So this is one of them in here. Um, my next whip is the, I think you say Lucente. Um, the, sh the link to the project is in the show notes, of course. Um, I haven't made a lot of progress on this. I just, I think it's because it's so repetitive. I just don't enjoy knitting it very much, but my mom really wants it finished before summer's over. So, um, it's coming along, you know, we're doing pink and then, um, it's this gradient cake, which is going to be really pretty. And then a silver, um, that goes with it, with a uh, gray with sparkles. So it's going, it's just not my favorite. So those whips, you know, one I can't show you and the other, I'm just kind of, I'll work on it. So those are my two, two of my whips. Now the last whip. I probably should not have started, but I really, really wanted to do. So, I mean, it's knitting. It's a hobby. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do what I want. So, um, I started a Hitofu day, which I realize a lot of people are doing Hitofu days right now, and that might have been part of my encouragement is seeing theirs. Um, so a while back I showed you some lace weight yarn that I had bought, but I had bought a bunch of different colors so I could hopefully do a gradiated shawl gradient shawl, however you want to say that. So instead of using it for a shawl, I'm using it for my Hitofude. So you can see you've already got some color changing going on. Um, now this part down here, the pinks are very, I'm trying to figure out how to hold this up for you. The pinks are very much the same from this one to this one, but this one is the silk alpaca blend and I think this one is just alpaca. So, um, or hold on, what is it? It is I'm sorry, that's baby merino and the other one is silk alpaca. So, but it's not got, the, so this is lighter just because it doesn't have the sheen of this. So it does look slightly darker. Um, and I kind of wish I'd bought more double skeins like that where they're the same color on a different base. So I think it looks really nice, like more, uh, more gradual. But um, so far it's coming along. Um, I've got the sleeves done and now I'm just working on um, the end of it. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. It's going really fast because I'm majorly addicted to this project and it's pretty much what I've been working on aside from a couple of uh, FOs I have for you to show you. Um, so these are the colors I have right now. I, what I do when I do gradients like this is I, if, if th these are 50 gram skeins, so I'll knit them in the last 10 grams is when I switch. So there's about 10 grams left of this one. And I just started the second one, and since it calls for fingering weight, I'm doing lace held double, um, which is what's allowing me to hold two strands, one of each strand together, um, to then make this, you know, two-toned effect. And you can really see it on this middle section where it's like purple and pink, but they're really two separate strands. Or it's like periwinkle and pink. But, um... Yeah, I like doing fingering weight held double for stuff like that. And I did something similar for my gradient nye shawl, which I knit a little while back, where it was two strands of fingering weight to get a worsted weight. So, yarn math. Um, but it's going really, really well. I have three more colors left, which is too much yarn, because um, I have more, than, more yarn than I need, which is always good. Um, these are my three that are left. Um, this is the Purple Mystery from the Silk Packa. 
Um, and this is Malabrigo yarn. Um, this is Violetta's in Silk Packa. And then this is um, Lavanda in just the their lace because this is the baby merino. So I think I'm going to go um, this one, this one, and then this one. Does that look about right? What I need to do is take a picture of all the yarn that's left and then turn it black and white and just see which ones look darker because that's a really good way to tell because sometimes when you're looking at actual colors like it's hard to distinguish which direction you should go especially when they're all darker purples. So. Um, I'm loving this project so far, and I'm not going to lie, this Silk Packa Sheen is so pretty. Um, I like the Baby Merino too, but the Silk Packa Sheen is just very motivating, I'll put it that way. Um, so now on to FOs. I finished my Rosamine socks. <gasps> Look at these! I love them, they fit great, they're wonderful. Um, I did two different heels because this one I did top down. Cause that's how the pattern's written and so it's got the top down heel with the gusset and the flap and all that stuff. And then when I did the second one I did toe up because I like toe up better. Um, and I did the OMG heel and I should have done more stripes but I did not. I don't know why I didn't do that. But um, I think it turned out really really well and they both fit very comfortably. They don't feel weird together even though they're knit in two different directions. But I love the way that fake embroidery looks. It just makes me super happy. So these are going in my sock collection, which is just exploding right now. Speaking of socks, I had a sock knitting fail FO. So um, I had shown you guys my new um, circular knitting needle set, this thing, last time. And I wanted them so I could knit two at a time. Well, when I knit two at a time in the past, I used a one and a half or a two, and this time I used a zero. Um, and I did the same amount of stitches that I would do on a zero and all of that. But the socks are really, really short. Um, and they just, they don't, like, that's the heel flap. And I, I think I got really antsy and didn't, like, measure enough things. Because obviously, like, there's a certain amount of inches this should be. And then that wasn't that. And then I kept going. Um, and I don't really know if it was the weird needle size for me or if I just knit them wrong but these are really tiny compared to most of my other socks so um, it barely used any yarn because these socks are minuscule so what I'm gonna do with these socks is I'm gonna frog the socks uh, because I only really use about 55 grams of a sock ball of yarn so there's plenty of yarn left to make another pair uh, I'm gonna frog these and make the, make uh, blanket squares and hexi puffs out of them um, and just have two little separate mini skeins of this to do that with, which will be nice because it's already portioned out. So I haven't ripped them out because I wanted to show them to you, but I'm not going to use them for anything. I might submit the yardage to Stash Dash um, and then just mark it frogged. Um, take a picture of my awful socks. But I mean, I didn't do enough past the heel for one thing. And I know that's my fault because I just got antsy and I wanted them off the needles. And I made them in a weekend, so it's not like I spent all this time on them. But I. I had a sock fail, and I don't have I don't have sock fails very often. Um, and here I'd gotten all comfortable with the number of stitches I had been using and all that sort of stuff. So I know there's been a couple other sock fails in the group, but I wanted to show you my sock fail. Itty bitty socks. And I don't know any teenagers to pass this on to that have smaller feet than me. So otherwise I would I would give them away, but they just need to be frogged, and that's okay sometimes. Sometimes things just need to be frogged. Um. I have some dying FOs. I dyed um, 470 yards of Cascade Eco in the Aran Weight, and it was supposed to be red and yellow with spots, with speckles. Tying speckle yarn is really hard when you don't know what you're doing. Um, and so I just did red and pink, and I tried speckling it, but it didn't really work. I think you have to use dry dye to do that, and I did not. So. Um, I tried. It's okay. Um, I need to show this to the person that I was dyeing it for their testing it so they can be like, do it or don't do it or save your yarn or whatever. Um, I really didn't li like the pattern I'm testing, so I wouldn't mind having this as one of the things as well. So we'll see. We will see. Um, and then I had bought some sock links, which I think I showed you guys a while back. And I had so much fun dyeing them. Um, and now these are really speckly, which is kind of ironic, but oh well. This is my first one. I call this one um, 
Sin and Lisa Frank because it's got like all these happy bright colors and then these dark splotchy colors which you know just kind of uh, a little sadness in the happy so that's what's going on with this one um, but I like it I think it's gonna knit up really really fun and you can tell um, part of it already started coming unraveled just because of the way I was uh, handling it but just from that like no, it's not solid colors, it's speckles, but I think I'm really looking forward to knitting these. So hopefully if I get my um, Hito Fude done and these will be my purse project when I can't spin for two or three next month. Okay, and then this is my second one. I think I called this Lisa Faux Reels or something like that. Like they're both Lisa Frank poppy colors. Um, I just, I use every bottle. Of color on the table at this for this one uh, but there's some colors I like more than others like I really like this blue right here that's my favorite blue um, and the best part about dyeing these is that you don't have to tie up your skeins and worry about them tangling because it's already a flat knitted piece um, although I did get some unraveling on this one as well which is fine because it's gonna be knit so that turned out really awesome my yellow and red thing I did not tie up and then I spent three or four hours untangling that whole mess. So yeah, <laughs> but that's okay. It happens. Um, yeah. Um, I know I'm going really fast. I have a book review for you guys today, which I'm really excited about. So um, I guess that's kind of stashed because it's nice to, to dye your own stuff. Um, as far as the house cup goes, I've got in five of six classes because you can submit dyeing for classes. So I dyed three things in one day and boom, three projects done. Um, also my Rosamine socks, my Rosamine socks, and then um, the spinning that I had shown you guys last time. So yeah. Um, what else is new? I have been trying to keep up with all the extracurricular stuff, extracurricular stuff that I got involved in. Um, and I got a little behind on some of those, but I think I've caught them back up. So. It's just been like, go, 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 go. So whenever I'm on a computer, I try and catch up on one of the 17 events, three or four events that I help man. So, but it, it's, it's nice to be so interactive with people, even if it's a little forced. So that's going really good. Um, if you are not interested in the book review, then you can skip. Just, it's been great talking to you. Sorry I've been so brief today. I had a lot of coffee right before I started, which makes me really hyper and succinct. So... But if you want to see all about the book, 101 Socks, stay tuned. All right, so 101 Socks. Um, this was sent to me by the Schiffer Publishing Company. This is my first book that a publisher has sent me to review, so that's kind of exciting. Um, and then they do circular needles. The sock types that they cover are circular needles, felted, Addy Express, toe-up crochet, and spiral knit. So there's actually... I was kind of um, hesitant at first. I was like, all right, this looks like one of those cheesy books where it's the same pattern, 17 different ways, and then a bunch of stuff with fun fur. You've seen those sock books, don't lie. You know they exist. Um, but this book is actually much more creative than that because they actually show you crocheted socks, which when I first learned how to make socks, um, I was a crocheter and I really wanted to crochet socks and I couldn't find instructions to do it like I just couldn't um, and that was a little bit pre ravelry too so that's fine but their content page is super stinking helpful I mean you can find whatever you're looking for in there so let's go section by section um, they do kind of go through the general here's how sock construction works but they don't beat you over the head with 50 pages of it which is nice it's just kind of some general stuff I mean there's two pages and then they jump right into the socks. And then they have beautiful page layouts like this, which I love this kind of a page layout where it's almost a menu of socks to knit. Um, just kind of giving you some information before they tell you the what. And then um, they, I want to show this to you without showing you pattern stuff. They don't take up pages and pages and pages describing every pattern. Um, Maybe I'll freeze frame this and blur out stuff. But um, this is this is four different sock patterns on one, you know, fold out page, or one page layout really, two pages but one you know spread. Um, 
because they know people who are knitting socks probably know how to knit and then you just kind of need a little bit of a recipe. Um, and they do the same for other socks as well. They kind of show you the socks and then they just kind of give you the overall, here's a simple what, what you need to do. Um, they have different sections, so this one's socks with flair. And some of them are a little ridiculous and not socks that you knit every day, but some of them have some fun stuff. Like, um, I like these braided cables up here. I think I'd want to try that just so I could, just so I could try it. You know, you could make slippers and stuff like that. Um, they also, like, they don't beat around the bush. They, they just jump from one subject to the next. Um, but in a, in a, you've learned this, now learn this kind of way. So then here is Spring Fresh. I think I like the blue socks in that one. And then throughout the book you'll find like more information like here's in the middle of I mean, we're several pages in this is all about the heel flap but it's not like they had a huge section at the front they just kind of like oh hey um, there's there's some more information you need on this. Um, they also do some beadwork socks which is fun. And then the farther you get into the book, you get a little bit more uh, decorative. Some decorative beach socks. I don't know if I'd wear, you know, socks on a boardwalk, but you know, some people do. Some people need some socks. Um, and I'm not going to show you everything, everything. But they also show you different heels, which is nice. Like, they show you the one, but they don't just like... This is the sock heel that we're going to use this book. They give you different stuff that you can kind of add in as you go. So if you're knit, knitting through the book, um, you can try new techniques without having to feel like it's all in the chunk, the chunk in the front. Um, they do some color stuff. Color fever. Which, not that I'm a colorful person at all. Mm, no, not, not me. Uh, they even get into patterns. Then we get into toe up, um, and here you do see some fun fur and chunky slippers. But you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do that. So I have some fun fur that I need to toss or knit. Um, yeah, I've got some. It's blue. They do. Um, they'll put really classic stuff next to some uh, less exciting stuff like I love these socks but these socks make you look like you have hairy legs I don't know what that's about but um, you don't have to knit all the socks in here either they do little socks for little feet how cute are those they're so stinking cute um, then they get into more intricate designs so we've got lace and we've got bobbles and all sorts of stuff on these socks and I mean, it's it's nice, like, it works up to it. It didn't start you off with these. Then we get into the crocheted stuff. And most of these are more slippery looking, like they look like slippers and not socks, but there are also socks in here. Um, and they give you lots of information about how, how that all works. Which I like. Yarn just feels good. Thank you, book. Thank you for letting me know how yarn feels. It feels good. Then we get into taller socks and knitting socks in the round instead of on DPNs, which, I mean, if you are working up to it, that's an excellent, excellent thing. They do um, socks with two circling needles is how they do it. But I mean, however... Then they go through socks that can be short or can be long, like you can just repeat forever, all the way up past your knees, apparently. I've never knit socks that tall, but one day, one day I will knit socks that tall. Um, they do more romantic knit socks, because socks are so luring. But they're very cute. They also have cute little booties. Now, they also have the Addy Express in here, and I don't have one of these, so I don't know how well these patterns are written. But it's really cool to see that in a sock book, to see like how a machine would knit socks and how you can adapt that to be different socks. 
I have no concept of any of that. Then we've got some schnazzy socks, which I would never knit, but they're fun to look at. We've got some fun fur and tassels and pom-poms, which everyday sock needs, right? Um, I do like that they have felted slippers. I'm not, I've never felted anything on purpose. So felted slippers is something I would like to do eventually. And it's nice to have that resource in this book when I've already got a bunch of patterns that I kind of have hearts next to that I want to do in the future. And they totally have dolphin slippers. What the heck? I need these in my life. Dolphin slippers. They even have some foxes and some bears. Although those foxes and bears look a little, you know, but you could tweak. Make it, make it the way you want it to make it. And they've got lots of little felted slippers that are just, you know, for the, for the kids. Little ones and big ones, it says. And then they get into spiral knit socks, which I have never done a spiral knit sock. And it's whenever you don't just knit the tube straight up, but you knit... I don't even, I don't even understand this yet. Um, so here are some of their basic courses for spiral socks. Look at this. It's knit like this twisty tube thing. And I just... Here's, here it is with the spiral heel. Look at this goofiness. I need to make these socks so badly. This might be my next big sock adventure. Um, a spiral sock is just never something that I've knit. But they look super cute. Um, they look more delicate somehow. So here are some of their spiral knit socks. I need these. <laughs> Come on, pages turned. And then they have some shorter variations of them, which, look at these. This is fun. I want spiral socks. And then it gives you some helpful stuff about the spiral socks. Like it, does, it doesn't just like leave you hanging. It helps you out. Now this is something I found really interesting is that they give you these standard sizes for stuff and then like, okay, well if you're doing it on DPNs, cast on this many, but if you're doing it on circulars, cast on this many. And I looked at this after I had my um, sad little miniature sock snafu. Um, and I know how big my feet are, and it did say that I should be casting on about like... Where's my foot? Hold on. I will find it for you. Give me one second. If I need a toe-up sock, and I wear a six and a half, I should be casting on about 54 stitches on double pointed, which is about what I've come to now that I keep knitting socks and keep adjusting my stuff. And so, um, that is really helpful. Plus you can do it by shoe size on here, which is nice because sometimes people will give you their shoe size instead of telling you, um, hey, my foot is eight inches long. So, um, I'm definitely going to be using this for sock gift knitting. Um, overall, I mean, this book is huge and it's $24.99 US. Um, would I buy it in the store? I think the spiral sock section is an interesting enough part to me and the felted slippers. I know that they have a lot of books like that out there for stuff individually, but I like that they're all together in one giant book for this. I think I would buy this. Um, yeah, I think I would. There, and there's some other interesting techniques in here too. And, you know, you can, sometimes you can find that stuff on Nitty or on YouTube, but I don't know. Their pictures for instructions are so bright and so clear. Um, that is something that I really value in a knitting book. Like, if you change colors for different sections on socks, I have another sock book that I that helped me learn how to make socks, and that was always super helpful to me to have the different pieces in different colors. Um, and not all sock books do that, and I like the ones that do because it really helps me identify like what I messed up on the first time. So yeah, I think I would definitely buy this. Um, again, this is a 101 socks, 101 socks, circular needles, felted, Addy Express, top crocheted, and spiral knit by the Schiffer Publishing Company. There will be a link on my show notes. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, now, for the rest of you who are still watching, I've had, this is the very brief podcast, and I'm sorry, but hopefully I will have Hito tofu day to show you next time, if not the time after that. And um, I will be going to SSK coming up. So if you're going to SSK, let me know. I'd love to meet up with you there. Um, we are still doing the sock along until the end of July, and then I will announce winners and send out prizes, and I'm very excited about that. Um, 
what else? We've got all sorts of events coming up there on the main page of the Ravelry group, so just go check those out. Post around if you're interested. Introduce yourself in the introduction thread if you haven't already done so. I saw a couple that I didn't get to today before I recorded, but I saw you. I saw you in there. I'm going to come talk to you. Um, other than that, um, have a great day. And whether you're knitting socks or crocheting slippers or whatever else you're crafting, I'll knit with you. Bye, guys.